Hey guys, Russ Tyndall here with Blue Line CNC. Welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I flatten panels using a CNC machine. Um, if you are familiar with other ways of flattening panels, you know we can uh, easily take these pieces of oak and run them through a thickness planer and spend a lot of time uh, working them down to the desired thickness. Uh, I've found uh, in my workflow that using the CNC works best and I'm going to show you how I do it here. Here you see me just removing uh, the panel from some panel clamps. These are the uh, Woodpecker's Clamp Zillas. I've featured them in another video. I'll put the card here in the upper right of the screen if you want to uh, view that video. And uh, they work out good. They uh, they they get that oak down. I'm using two panels of oak here. Um, I think they're about seven, eight inches in width, and uh, it uh, it joined them up real nice. It did leave a little bit of a gap, or not a gap, but a uh, difference in height in one area of the panel. It was about oh a little less than a sixty-fourth of an inch, and then of course we got the glue squeeze out to contend with on the other side. But uh, that's no big deal. The CNC is going to make fast uh, work of that. I apologize for the camera shake here. Um, for some reason, I'm getting some harmonic resonance from the table saw. Uh, but you see me just uh, cutting the, the panel down to size. I'm doing some rip cuts and cross cuts using the cross cut sled here. And uh, getting it to our, uh, our finished height and width of 15 inches high by 28 and a half inches in length. And I, when I fixture my pieces of, of wood on the CNC for surfacing, I fixture them uh, in a finished size. I don't put them on oversized and then cut them out on the CNC. They're already pre-cut to size and you'll see that uh, shortly when I put it on the machine. So here we are just marking that uh, overall length of the uh, panel and uh, I'm using my little uh, carpenter square to uh, get a perfect line and in a moment you'll see me transfer that line to the leading edge uh, right here you see that so I can line it up with my zero cut clearance mark on my uh, sled And we're just getting that final width as we make this final cut on the crosscut sled. If you don't have a crosscut sled, I strongly urge you to go ahead and build one. They uh, are invaluable in completing cuts like this on the table saw in a safe manner and making sure that you're safe when you do uh, cuts like this. So here we are, we're taking the panel, uh, we're going to put it on the CNC machine and you can see I have the dogs over on the left and on the bottom of the panel uh, and I'm checking the corners to see how it fits on the, uh, the machine and to see if I have any gaps. That's the main purpose here. And you're going to see me use some shims here momentarily. I do have a slight gap in the lower left that I'm checking right there. And as it turned out, uh, all the other three corners, the top left and the ones over on the right, were perfect. And you can see that by pressing down on that lower left, I am getting a little bit of play. And we want to correct that with some shims before we run our surfacing bit over this. So I have a whole set of shims that I purchased. I'll put the link down in the description. And I'm using a 15 thousandths shim right here. And my set of shims runs from 75 thousandths down to all the way to 1 thousandths of an inch. Some pretty thin stock there on the, the lower end. And they work great. And again, I'll put the link in there. And uh, here you can kind of see the, the whole set. They don't come with the little black plastic case. I made that. Uh, so we'll just secure the workpiece in the CNC machine. I use little spacers on the top and on the right side. I'm using armor clamps up top 
lever clamps and I'm using the Craig clamps over on the right. They work fantastic in holding the material laterally. And the force of the, uh, the bit itself, the surfacing bit, will keep the material in place. Here you can see the Amana 2255 uh, three-wing surfacing bit. Pretty aggressive bit, and it does a very good job at surfacing the material down. It's got a half inch, uh, fits into a half inch chuck, or collet, I should say. And I'm just using my ER32 collet wrenches and tightening this bad boy down. Jump over to Mach 4 for a second, and here you're seeing me set my offset to the G55. And we're going to come up and we're going to load our program. So we'll click on File Operations, and we'll load our G code. And I happen to have the file that I'm looking for on my desktop in a folder called Avid CNC Toolpath. So we'll click on that, and we'll select Flag Leveling RC2255. I'll load up the, the file. We're going to go ahead and position our, our milling bit, our surfacing bit, so we can get our Z axis. Z axis. The bit is too big to use our touch off puck, so we're going to do it manually the old fashioned way. And we're going to use a piece of thin tissue paper and get it as close to the surface as possible. And here you see me just going into jogging mode, and I'm going to jog the CNC down. And I'm going to get it as close to as possible to where that tissue paper just starts to drag a little bit underneath the bit. And here you see me jogging that uh, milling bit down. I use a game controller to control the uh, CNC machine. It works out real good and the software system that I use is freeware. It's called Antimicro. I'll put a link to that and also the game controller that I use. So once you get that down to where you want, you want to go ahead and zero your bit like I just did there. And what I like to do is go back to incremental jog into the one inch measure and bring it up two inches off the work surface. And then uh, We'll go ahead and bring our milling bit home to our work XYZ. And here you can see the bit coming back to its home position, which is the G55 offset. And we'll just turn our dust collection on and hit cycle start on the machine. And I'm not going to make you sit through this whole video watching this go at regular speed so I've sped it up a little bit and the bit does nothing more than go systematically back and forth. I've got this program set up to take off uh, 20 thousandths at a time so if I have to run it a second time or a third time to get the material thickness down to where I need to uh, it's really easy to just rerun the program uh, lowering the Z each time. And after we've gotten the first side done, we'll just simply remove that shim and flip the workpiece over. And we'll go ahead and resecure it onto the CNC machine and run it a second time. And that's as simple as it is, guys. I'm um, just using shims and. Uh, leveling out that that first uh, surface so to speak we want to make sure that that flag is sitting uh, perfectly level on the spoil board using those shims we don't want any play in the material so that's what the purpose of the shims are for and then once we have that first side done you'll find that your 
material sits nice and flush on the spoil board once you flip it over and then you can go ahead and run your surfacing program as many times as necessary to get your material down to thickness. Uh, you don't want to take off too much. That's uh, why I went with the panel clamps initially. They do a great job at uh, minimizing the uh, amount of material that you need to take off, I should say. Uh, before the panel clamps, I was finding that by using just parallel clamps and calls, they weren't quite working as good as I wanted them to, and I was having to take off a lot more material than desired than I than I wanted to. So, anyway, if you guys like this sort of thing and you like these videos that I'm putting out there, please uh, give me a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content. And until the next one, you guys have a great day.